Rise, ye ashen tarnished chosen undead. Welcome, Souls fans, new and old, to part two. Technically three, because we did a little bit at the beginning, but anyway, digressing, of the Mad Warrior Farm. Thankfully, this should be the last video on it. Um, if it takes an hour to get five of these, then I will not have any hair left by the end, because I will have torn it all out. Uh, we only need five more. We've got 25 kills so far so we just need to get five more uh even with the bad luck that we had for the first half hour of the uh previous video even with that we're still going to get the five that we need um all i hope is that this video will be as quick as possible so that we can get you to the next video where we continue the journey uh, obviously you don't have to watch the full videos um yeah, there is absolutely no obligation to that. But if you are out of principle, fandom, or for whatever reason, uh, first of all, thank you. I am genuinely touched and appreciating that. Um, and we're going to try and get this done as quickly as possible. But we are at the mercy of the game and a 12.5% spawn rate. If you haven't heard me say that, stand enough. Just five more. As soon as we get to 30, as soon as we get the hidden weapon sorcery, we will end this video. Um, I do not want to start a video of a farm. I think that's not fair um, from a viewer's perspective. So we'll keep the farm. Either we'll demonstrate it at the end of the video, like we did two videos ago. Um, or it will be its own separate video, uh, like in the last video. But yeah, farming will be kept separate. Journeying on, we will only do that at the start of a new video. So there we go, that's number 26, four to go. So in the previous video, once we did 10 kills, 10 invader kills while being a member of the Bellkeeper Covenant and beating the invader up here in the Bellkeeper Arena. Um, once we got to 10, we talked to Bellkeeper Bro uh, and he gave us a Titanite slab. Once you get to 30, you talk to him again and that's when he gives you the hidden weapon sorcery needed for the trophy for all the sorceries. And if you're wondering who Bellkeeper Bro is, that's Bellkeeper Bro. Come on, four more spawns at the map. Just four. As you would have seen in the last video, it seems to go through droughts, you'll, you'll, you, you won't see him at all, and then suddenly will appear all the time, and then won't see him at all. Um, seems to be the way. That's not how it works. It's a 12.5% 12, 12 spawn rate every time you reset a bonfire, but that's how it works. In the last video, I did a uh, relation to Gambler's Fallacy and flipping a coin. No different to that. But yeah, I, I've I've seen people that have come up with all of these different farming theories. They will go, oh, I'll quit the game after this many and reload this. Uh, some people have said change the clock. It, there's so much, but no, the honest answer is it is pure variance. Um, similar to an experiment with the clown and the marbles. Um, it is 
purely there is nothing you can do that will change the likelihood of the outcome that's number 27 the only thing you can do is just keep trying or keep waiting for the outcome to happen Number 28, so good to see you. Number 28, dodged one of the stars. Two more to go. Yeah, the experiment with the clown and the marbles, one of my favourite um, psychological experiments. So they took a group of uh, strangers and they said it was competition. They actually, they first did this with kids, but then they proved it worked the same with adults. Um, and the competition is you are going to get put into a room with a... Uh, mechanical clown and this machine will dispense marbles from its mouth and you have one minute in the room with this machine and what you need to do is in that minute you need to obtain as many marbles as you can and whoever gets the most wins the prize um, so that's what happens people go in there and the, I say it's a mechanical clown and it's a machine because there are numerous moving parts of it. You can move the arms up and down, uh, you can change the fingers, you can change um, the wrists, uh, I think you can close its eyes. There's a whole bunch of features that can be manipulated um, on one's quest to get the marbles. That was number 29, one to go. Um, and what they did is after the minute when the person leaves the room they would ask, they would show how many marbles do you have count them up and then they would ask the all important question how do you get the clown to dispense a marble and this is where the experiment actually begins because every single contestant gave a completely different answer no well obviously some were close and some would have, say yeah, there'll be similar trends. People say, oh, you move the arms, you do this. But no one gave the exact same answer of what you do to get a marble. And there's a reason for that. Because the actual experiment, um, the clown was programmed to distribute the same number of marbles across a minute. So let's say 20 marbles in a minute. However, at purely random intervals. So no matter what people did, they actually had zero influence over those marbles coming out and they all got the same number of marbles. What the experiment was to do was nobody said, oh, I don't know. Everybody had a, re a theory behind how you made the clown give out a marble. And what this was proving was our human nature to believe we have control over our surroundings, even when we don't. Um, you know, and that's, you know, superstition is where it's all formed. You know, oh, I don't wear this item of clothing on this day because it might rain. Uh, even though that what you wear has no influence over it whatsoever. But that's how we're, we're built. We're built to believe that we have control over our surroundings, over our lives. Whereas the, the fact of the matter is we actually have very little. Um, but that is the clown and the marbles. Um, love the experiment. Um, you know the, the the concept of or the illusion of control. Um, it's quite an interesting debate because we do obviously have control. We can control ourselves. We can control elements of a situation, but we cannot genuinely control the situation. Um, what we have is not necessarily control, but we have choice. And there's a big difference between the two. Um, you know, we can control our preparedness. 
we can definitely take steps to mitigate a lot of the variance. Because variance, essentially, variance and control are two opposing uh, sides of the spectrum. And just like the Mad Warrior spawning or not spawning, spawning are two different sides of a spectrum. One. Dark Souls 2, you've got me talking about psychology and sociological matters on a platinum guide. Is that really what it's coming down to? Unless anyone watching this is interested, at which point, hey, I'll do it more. <laughs> There's plenty more experiments and uh, different things that I just find interesting. Um, probably not going to get started on uh, dream science or you know, dream theories, the conscious and subconscious. But hey, if it gets an audience, I will entertain it. <laughs> but what I want to entertain right now is six spells into the carcass of one more mad warrior invader and then we'll never have to do this again come on yay number 30 we celebrate you because you are the last However, not the last time we're going to fight the Mad Warrior. Uh, we're actually going to fight a lot more of them, just not here. Um, there's a point where you get ambushed by an army of them um, later on. So now we've got 30. We do a little cheer, a little jig. You can't see it, but I am. And we talk back to this person. <laughs> Your devotion to your covenant has deepened and you have gained a rank. And we're going to get sorcery number 18 of 31, the hidden weapon sorcery. Which is why we're here in the first place. Keep slicing and dicing till they're <laughs> hidden weapon, there we go. That's what all this was for. <laughs> And with that, we are going to travel to Medulla, and I will start the next video from Medulla, because that is the end of this farm. And that's what this video and the previous video were, were just purely about the farming. Hence, we ended up talking about non-Dark Souls things, because there's only so much you can talk about outside of context. Uh, we'll put the equipment on the next video. So yeah. Fantastic. We got there. Hopefully you got there quicker and easier than I did. Um, and yeah, I will see you in the next video where we will finally continue our journey. Bye for now.